I'm grateful to be here. I enjoy talking about preparation and, and to uh, give people some ideas of things that they can do to help themselves prepare for what's coming and, uh, in the future. So with that in mind, my background, I worked with BYU Survival Program, the 30-day and the Wilderness Treks and the Pioneer Treks back when Pioneer Treks had just started. And we got to learn how to do all of this um, different kind of cooking methods, but <clears throat> that kind of stuff, most people aren't going to do that. I mean, we're going to use what we've got in our homes, and uh, that's what I want to talk about today, is what are some of the methods that we've got. So this is a, this is a key one. What emergency situation could happen where I live? Right here in Highland, and you guys are... Bluffdale. Bluffdale? Okay, you've got some issues there too. Uh, so <laughs> Highland and Bluffdale, what kind of things could happen that would cause an emergency here? What has happened in the past? Remember the snowstorm that we had that shut off Tippinogos, you know, SR-92? My, my son was trapped in that and I had to go, you know, do a little rescue, four-wheel drive, and I could barely get through. Um, what else do we have an issue here in Thailand and Bluffdale? Earthquake. Big one, yeah, earthquakes. 50-50 um, chance it's going to happen, who knows when, but uh, the church is geared up for it. They've retrofitted um, tabernacles, temples, all the things, so they're, they're geared up for it. So the question is, is what cooking methods would be best if living off-grid away from home? <coughs> So let me just ask, you know, these are some things that some of you may have lived in before. Any of you been in floods? Okay. What, where were you, what was the situation with that? Well, we, it was in uh, North Carolina, and it's very hilly, so you never, there's never really truly a safe place because there's always water runoff. And so we happened to be at a floodplain that was up, uh, well enough, but the rivers swell and they'll just take out houses and we just wipe them right out. Yeah. So, I, you know, there's a, so many things that can happen. Fires, the Alpine fire they had up on the side of the mountain. Uh, had a good friend that uh, lived up there. They had, to, they had five minutes to evacuate. And, you know, what do you do? What do you take in five minutes? Um, and if you have to go and you have to be somewhere for a period of time, how do you live off it? So, this, this is a really important question. How prepared am I to cook without power? Now, you look up there. If you have a can of SpaghettiOs or spaghetti and wanted to cook that, is that edible right out of the can? Yeah, yeah it may not be, you know, it's cold, it may not be as tasty as being warm, but you bet, you can eat it right out of the can. Um, soup, you can do the same thing. Now, what about the rest of these? If you have freeze-dried food, you need what? Water and filtered water. Yeah, filtered clean water and a heat source. Um, you know, because a lot of it requires boiling water to make it reconstitute. Um, if you're doing something like that, you definitely need to have an option to cook with. Bread is another one. I ask people, you know, how much, how many of you have wheat in your food storage? Oh, everyone hands goes up. How many tons do you have? You don't go by, you know, pounds, but how many tons do you have? Because people have a lot of wheat that they store. So uh, I ask them, well, how are you going to cook the wheat in a grid down situation where your oven's off? Your gas, the gas line's broken, the power's down. How are you going to cook your bread? I hadn't thought about that. Well, just off the top of your head, what could you do with what you've got at home? Most of you could cook bread if you know you could, but what could you use to cook bread if they were down? Your grill. Yeah. If you have a grill, you can cook in that. If you've got a Dutch oven or a bread pan, I like Dutch ovens because they do an even heat, but you could cook on your barbecue grill. Do a loaf of bread in it. Or with the, you can put a stick over the fire like the Cub Scouts and uh, put your bread around it and away you go. And most of us, and I've been involved in scouting long enough, that's been the traditional way of cooking. Um, one problem with cooking over an open fire is uh, the heat goes everywhere. You know, it does go up, but there's a lot of heat loss, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit too on some methods that can, you can use with firewood for that kind of thing. So, with a lot of these, many 
of us have this kind of thing? We use this for canning. When we do our canning, we do applesauce and stuff, and we'll put up three or four of these and we'll the whole family over, and we'll have 20 of us there, and we'll bottle several hundred quarts of applesauce in an afternoon, and this is our way of doing it. Most of us have some Dutch ovens, barbecue grill, whether it's a briquette one or regular. Many of us have these. These are the old-fashioned ones. That they're great. You put it over fire, and these are a lot of fun to cook on, too, if you have one of these. Back when they built these, they built them kind of like a rocket stove to be efficient. So those, that kind of a cooking method is a, is a very good one. Now, so here's some questions to ask um, as you're looking at the big picture. What kind of foods do I have for short and long-term use? You know, we're all instructed to get our three-month supply and our long-term food storage. Can I eat them directly from the container? A lot of our three-month supply, we can. We can take it right out of the can, the box, and eat it. Um, but there are things that need, you know, if you need to have some liquid, do my um, stored foods need to be cooked? What's the most efficient way to cook the fuel that I have? This little graph has been a fun one. I got it from uh, <coughs> your family, Ark. And uh, for a one year supply, and again, this will be on the website, so you don't need to write this down. What they've done is they've gone through and figured um, for a, a person, for a couple, you know, a couple is, you know, if you have a family, you have, to have to get more. But uh, now when they talk about alcohol, what kind of alcohol would that be? Isopropyl? Yeah. That, that, so that's the kind of alcohol? rubbing alcohol. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Canned heat, and you can purchase those, charcoal, propane, wood stove, and solar. And then they talk about how much you need, um, hours you can get out of it, and then the cost. So um, you can see for about that much money um, is what they figure that you could use. Now, with that being said, um, as I've taught these over the year, I've got I've learned a lot, and I'm, I'm going to share with you some things so that you don't have to make some of the mistakes I did. I have all of this stuff up here, and I'm not recommending you get all of that stuff, but there are some, the top four that I really like, I'm going to share with you. Now, if you've got these things, you know, if you've got a can cooker like that, um, great. If you've got, you know, any of these other methods of cooking, wonderfully use them. Um, you can, you know, if you're very creative, I've done cooking right in a box, by the casseroles and cakes and all kinds of things in a cardboard box, and that's a fun way to do it. Each one of these methods, um, you could uh, spend a whole class period on. Now, I'm going to share my top four methods, and we're going to spend most of the time on the rocket stove because I, that thinks that what it was advertised. But I want to share some of these others. Like I say, each one of these could be a class in themselves, um, but. Let's just go through some of these and talk about it. How many of you have used a heat retention block, hay cooker, any one of these methods? All right. Why do you like them? What's the benefit of having them? You don't have to use as much fuel. Right. You don't have to use very much fuel at all. You can heat something up for 10 minutes, depending on the recipe, a stew, put it inside, and if you've got this kind, you can put your pot right down inside here, put this on the top and be able to cook at home. Now if you're traveling somewhere and you want to use something else, commercially made ones are great, the Saratoga Jacks, this is a thermos brand one, but you get it up to boiling for 10 minutes, put your stew in there, your chili or whatever, and then you go, let's say you have an hour drive to get to where you're going, when you open it up it will be cooked, which is a, it really is amazing. So as far as efficiency, these are a great efficient way to go. So, Let's talk about some of the uh, pros and cons of it. Uh, minimize the fuel, fuel uh, for foods that take a long time to cook, like beans and rice. My wife, um, a lot of times we have our family over every couple of weeks and we, have, we, we uh, use this if we're doing rice. You know, a lot of us have the rice cookers that you set, the, you know, you put your rice in, it's really a foolproof one except for when they don't work. And uh, you know, you push the button and you let it cook and it does the whole thing and pull it out and you got rice. Now, I don't know how many times we've had problems where we thought we put it, set it right, and we go to pull it out, and it hasn't turned on, or it hasn't worked. So, with one of these, this is a great way you can get perfect rice with this. Beans, same thing. How does that work? I don't see a cord. Okay, good question. There's no cord on it. So, the way it works is this is, this is insulated inside here, 
This one is vacuum packed with the Saratoga jacks have insulation, so it depends on the kind you get. So this is like putting it in, let me back up, putting it in a cooler like this. So if you have one of these coolers, you could do the same thing and put blankets inside it and uh, so um, in other words, you're cooking that pot on know, the stove. Uh -huh. or and, then and then put it in. So if you get it to the boil, and a lot of times they've got some recipes, Saratoga Jacks has recipes and the others do, how long you're to boil it, once you get it to that boiling point, and then you quickly put it inside here, and then it continues to cook without any heat. So in a grid down situation, these can be very, very helpful, because uh, you're not using near the fuel you would um, when you're doing the other methods. Inexpensive can be made from items you have in your home. You can go on the website. Uh, some of you built these. I think, Chad, you've got one. Anyone else? Okay. Um, you can build these, make them um, with those little styrofoam beads. And uh, they're, they're very efficient. They, actually, this works, holds heat better than this one because there's more insulation. Yes. And, and you, can uh, build, you can build one of those for $20, one of yeah. those Wonder Ovens. So You can go online and order the beads. I like, the, I like to get a different size beads, you know, they've got some about the size of a pea, some about the size of a BB, and some even smaller, because it fills up all kind of the dead air space, so um, these you, you can go online and you can find, you know, fairly easy to make too. How much are you about? Is that Saratoga about? Jacks are a hundred, hundred twenty. They're over a hundred dollars, yeah. Uh, for them, but these are great practical ones, you're coming, you know, to the church for a banquet, um, you know, some kind of a dinner, you put your food in here and it will be every bit as hot as when if you bring it over in a crock pot and plug it in. So basically this is a, a crock pot without a cord, if you want to look at it that way. So the Saratoga Jacks are headquartered in Saratoga Springs and you can get those online from them or go pick them up and you save on shipping but they're, they're locally. You were talking about uh, going to a ward dinner mm -hmm. and uh, just raise your hands. I, I know at least in our state, the tenth ward in our state had a ward dinner, and everybody had to bring something out of their food store. That was that was the ward dinner. So how many of you had your ward do something like that in the past couple of years? So that's when you could encourage your your ward emergency prep person to let's have one of those. Yeah. Th then it's got dual purpose. Where you learn how to cook. Great, great <coughs> comment. Um, and, and, and we, I'm sorry, so we also used to talk about holding heat, but these hold it cool, keep things cool very well as well. And you can transport ice cream in this Wonder, Wonder um, box, the Wonder oven. So that's the other flip side of this is they can keep things fairly cool as well. So if you were to put this inside your, your thermos that's got ice in it too, you'd have a double, you know, even just keep it longer. So now these are very versatile. I really like them. Uh, great for soups, stews, anything you slow cook, uses up to 70% less fuel, uh, you don't have to tempt it. Now one thing I really like about it too is you can bake bread in here. So how in the world do you bake bread? Um, what you do is you get those cans that uh, you buy at the store that are um, fruit juice, they come in the quart, you know, steel can, about so big, and you uh, cut the top off and you can put your bread in there and boil it on the stove, and there's a recipe for it, and put it in here and eat it. My first time trying this, I was really skeptical on how you know, it would taste, but it was as about as moist as you can get. It was really good bread, and it, it did rise, and it uh, worked out great. So bread can be done in them too, so they're, they're fun, they're versatile. My uh, second one, <laughs> my third one that I like, are pressure cookers. Now, when I grew up, we had a pressure cooker like that, and my mom said, Kevin, don't get near the pressure cooker. You could blow the house up. And she was right, because back then, those old ancient pressure cookers were not very safe. The newer ones they've got today, they've got so many safety features in so that that won't happen, that uh, you can buy electric ones or ones that go on the stove. Um, but pressure cookers are wonderful. For canning, um, we've got a bigger one as well. We're doing uh, things like meat. If you're wanting to, you know, have a good sale on, we had a good sale on bacon. So what we did is we bought you know, 15 pounds of bacon. We got several big things of it, and we did it all up in there. 
My wife saved the grease because she makes soap out of it. So we had the grease we saved for soap and she saved the others and we cooked it in a pressure cooker and uh, it's a good way to do meat and other things. And I've got a friend that did a demo um, over in our steak, uh, I think it was back in February on pressure cookers. And uh, he, he's been doing this, it's the Mapleton Ready group. And uh, he said in his business he travels to uh, through Nevada a lot, and there's always a restaurant that they go to, I think it was in Mesquite, that had the best ribs that he'd ever eaten. He says, he'd ask him, okay, you know about that one. And he kept asking, what's your secret? How do you do this? And, you know, they never tell him. And one, in a weak moment, one time when he was there, they says, what we do is we pressure cook our ribs. Yep. So, so that, that was their secret. And I, he gave us a recipe, it's a very simple recipe. You, do, you use ginger ale, vinegar, put your ribs in there, cook it for you know, about 17, 20 minutes, let it cool down, take it out, put your favorite barbecue sauce on, put it in the broiler in your oven, four minutes on one side, four minutes on the other side, and you'll have ribs to die for, they'll fall right off the bone. Mm -hmm. They are wonderful. So, good right now. <laughs> <laughs> so these, are, these are great. I mean, for uh, softening up your, you know, if you've got, beans that your great grandmother came across the plane saved and you you know kind of have still a little bottle of them and you want to soften them up some of them are hard as rocks this is the way to do it you know with a pressure cooker now with them food retains most of their nutrients that are tastier um, if you get if you do this right even with vegetables they taste better but you can't do it too long because then they get mushy so you know you have to be careful and check the recipes that they have saves fuel um, up to 70% uh, faster Keeps the kitchen cooler because uh, you don't you just got it in a one pan. Uh, less cleaning is required. Great for preserve, preserving food. So pressure cookers are my number three choice because again they're energy efficient. And I'm trying to look at all these other ways to say. To give you an idea, um, up one of our wards in our state, um, the viewpoint ward is is kind of the mouth of AF Canyon, and uh, their water. Um, uh, storage unit is up higher than what Highlands is down lower, kind of where they're at, and theirs is up higher. And they had a, um, a problem with the water, it got contaminated, and uh, they were told up there, in fact, Linden had it just recently too, a similar situation, where they could not drink their water. How, much, how long do you think it took before Ridley's was out of water? An hour. You know, the gal went down there and she bought cases of, you know, this those little plastic bottles of water to drink. Um, the same thing is going to happen too if an earthquake comes or something happens and say, well, I'll just go to the store and I'll pick it up. Now you folks, you already know that because you wouldn't be here unless you did. But our neighbors and friends don't. So that's what we're trying to educate them is that, well, it's, let's have this kind of preparation stuff now so that when things do go bad, if and when they do, we're going to be ready for it. We're going to be prepared. Um, my second favorite one is the solar cooking. Now, I have all of these different ones, and I like them all. They all have great purposes, and, and you know, actually, you can make this one a very simple one. The reflector thing you have in your car, you put up in the window to keep it from getting hot. You can actually make a solar cooker out of that, and you get temperatures up around 200 degrees um, with that. But um, you can't get as high as some of these other methods. This is a great little one. They've got this in a bigger one too. They've uh, I just saw a show where they made these into bigger ones, and, and uh, what what basically this is is a glass tube that's uh, a vacuum tube, and it's got a long tray that you put inside, and you can cook right inside this. And as far as temperatures and light portability, these are wonderful, but they don't hold a lot of food. So there's the downside there. The bigger ones do. Uh, this, this is a great one. We've used this camping. You put your pan on there, you cook your bacon and eggs, and then you go put something like that, a little uh, pot there for doing dishes, and then when you uh, eat your breakfast and you come back, your water will be boiling and you do your dishes. So this is a fun one. When I worked with scouts, um, this is a great little thing you can do. You put a piece of paper over it, whoosh, immediately burns it burst into flames because the temperatures are so hot, you're just focusing all the rays of the sun right on a focal point right underneath this. Um, 
The Soul of War is another great one. These two are very similar. This one will actually be a little bit, a little bit hotter than this one, but I say if you have either one of these, they are wonderful tools to use. Some of the things that I like mainly about them, it's free energy, low flame, clean, easy, and safe. You can bake, cook, pasteurize water, dehydrate foods. They've got uh, a great little uh, um, pasteurizer in there where you can put in water. And it's got a, this little uh, deal about so big that uh, there's wax in it. It uh, melts at a certain temperature. You know your water's done. It's got dehydrating racks. Um, some of the best bread, I'm the bread maker in our family. My wife is, wife is gluten free, so she has to uh, be careful. So I, I have my recipe I do, and I've got a recipe from opening the covers up to eating it. It's a one hour recipe, and you make you know, four loaves at a time. When I do it in the sun oven, because the way that holds the moisture, regular ovens tend to dry things out, but sun ovens hold the moisture in. So I really like the sun oven for cooking. Uh, the commercial solar ovens can cook nearly as fast as a conventional oven. Uh, food does not burn, with the exception of high sugar content foods like cookies. Cookies can burn in here, but you know, you can, I've left bread in my sun oven for two, two and a half hours, and you think, boy, if you were to do that in an oven, what would it be like? It would be like a brick, but it still stays moist. If I have low sun, and I'm cooking at 200 degrees instead of 350, then I'm going to leave it in here a little bit longer. So they're, they're wonderful. Um, you can cook on a partly day. Now in, uh, in Utah, we have 226 out of the 365 days that we can use a sun oven. You know, we've got quite a bit of sun, so they're, they're efficient. The only downside is when you've got a partly cloudy day, and sometimes we'll go months, a whole month, and we've had some of those between, you know, between December and now where we've got almost a whole month where it's just been cloudy, overcast, rainy, snowy, cold, you can't use these. So if I have my choice of all the methods I've got, if there's a sunny day, boom, I'm going to go right to this. Um, 24th of December, my wife for uh, Christmas wanted to have an egg salad. So we went put a dozen eggs in here, left it right in the cardboard carton, and cooked them without boiling them in the sun oven and uh, they came out perfect. We have chickens too and with chickens, if, you, if you've raised chickens, if you have a fresh egg and you're trying to get it so it doesn't stick to the skins and peel off, it doesn't going to happen. But in here, they will. So you can do eggs in here um, too. How long did you cook them? Um, I think it was about half hour. Um, you can kind of tell on the eggs, uh, they'll on the outside of the eggs, they'll have little brown dots will kind of come out and that lets you know you're getting close to being done. We just did one just recently. My daughter teaches classes in this and she is she's an expert. She probably uses this two or three times a week. She doesn't even use her oven at home. I mean, she, there's so much you can do in this. Anything new in your oven, you can do in this. So they're very, very efficient. Now my, my uh, first choice is rocket silver and let me tell you why and kind of the how all this came about. Say, why would you put a rocket stove in as your first choice? Um, back when I was a Cub Scout, I made I made the little tin can, one gallon can with the you know the soup cans inside, bend up, and and uh, I made my own, and they work. They're very efficient. I thought those are the coolest things. And then I saw some of the commercial ones out there, and I thought, you know what? Um, there's got to be a way because I had an oven like this one right here in a tent stove that I've got, there's got to be a way that you can connect the rocket stove and the oven together so you can bake bread and cook on top and do all this at the same time. My inspiration usually comes in the middle of the night about 4 in the morning and then when I get it I wake up and I can't get back to sleep and that's what happened the night it came and I, this uh, little ring on the uh, bottom right here um, was the secret to get these things to connect together. So uh, my first loaf of bread was, made, was done in February in a blizzard outside. It wasn't a very good time to do it, but I was so excited about it that I wanted to test it out. So I got my bread, you know, in the house at the raised the hot high to the bed, and I wrapped it in a laundry basket and blankets and quickly took it outside and opened up the door to put it in and put my loaf in. I thought, oh, for sure, it's not going to work. It's going to fall. And uh, got it inside, closed it up, and so that's where that, this is where this all came from, this, this whole rocket soul concept.
So is this your invention? It is. So this part on top is the oven. Cylinder stoves down in Chester, Utah, they manufacture um, the oven. And I don't have the tools to do all of this to bend it and do you know, that fancy stuff they do. So they do the oven and I do the, the, the bottom part. So we've got a, little, got a little clip that I want to share with you. We've kind of watched and then I want to spend some time to talk about all the flexibility and the things that you can do on one of these. Now, with that being said, um, on our website, our state's website, if you are inclined to build your own, wonderful. I have the plans for this on there. I mean, I'm not, I'm trying to get, to get this out for people to help them so that if you want to build your own and you've got the tools to do it, you can. So i got the whole plans on there to do it, but if you want to get one, you can get purchase them as well. Well, let's watch this little clip. With the purchase of your rocket stove in from your professional camping friends at Deluxe Camping, you are ready to cook outdoors without the mess and without using a lot of wood. By using the Deluxe Camping Rocket Stove in, you can cook cleaner and more efficiently. The Rocket Stove in provides a cooking surface like a burner on your range top. It burns cleaner using much less wood than an open campfire, creating very little smoke or ash. It is densely insulated and has a 1 8 inch thick steel burn chamber. This design channels the heat from the fire inside the burn chamber to the cooking surface on top, where you can use a pot to boil water or cook a soup or stew. You can also easily use a frying pan to fry bacon and eggs or cook any other food. The types of pots and pans that can be used include different sized frying pans, a Dutch oven with legs or one with a flat bottom, a stock pot, a coffee pot, and even a pressure cooker. With a special cooking platform, you can even cook with pans that have an uneven or round bottom. You can even remove any pots or pans and cook s'mores. To start a fire, pull out the steel plate and put the fire starter, egg carton section with melted wax and wood shavings on the back of the plate that will be pushed into the burn chamber. Light the fire starter and put in five or six small sticks or twigs. Once the fire starts to go, add larger wood. Two to three inch diameter wood can be used. As the fire burns, the sticks or wood will need to be pushed into the back of the burn chamber. It is helpful to have a stick to push the wood. Deluxe Camping has taken the rocket stove concept to a whole new level. Instead of having just one cooking surface where you can cook with a pot or pan, the Rocket stove -in allows you to securely attach an oven on top by using a special clamp. The best way to connect the Rocket stove -in and the oven is to put the clamp on the Rocket stove -in with a thumb screw pointing forward to the right front corner of the oven. This makes it easier to tighten the screw. There is a small ridge in the clamp that points down. Now set the oven in the clamp and tighten it. When you first open your oven, you will see two pans and a black knob. Unscrew the knob and screw it in the handle on the back of the oven. This is for the creosote cleaner. I will talk more about that later. The oven functions just like your oven at home, where you can bake casseroles, cookies, cakes, and breads. The oven has racks inside where you can place bread pans, cookie sheets, or casserole dishes. It comes with a cookie sheet and a baking pan. The pans fit on two different shelves. With the oven on top of the rocket stove in, the heat circulates completely around the oven chamber, providing even heat for baking. Smoke does not come in contact with the food. The heat then vents out the top of the oven, so you now have a stovetop cooking surface where you can place a pot or pan to cook additional food without using additional fuel. This cuts down on the time it takes to cook your meal and the fuel you use. Cooking two things at once can cut your cooking time in half. This way, you can bake your biscuits and fry your bacon and eggs at the same time. Or at dinner time, you heat water for cleanup as your casserole is baking in the oven. Here are some helpful tips that will make your baking more successful. When using your oven for the first time, you should bring the temperature to 400 degrees and let the paint burn off. When the oven quits smoking, it is ready to use for baking. Cook one thing at a time. If you are baking bread, you can cook two loaves at once, side by side, but you should cook bread on one shelf and cookies on the other shelf at the same time. You should only cook one casserole at a time. You can, however, cook two sheets of cookies at the same time. We have found that using silicone baking mats provides better performance when baking on cookie sheets. Food cooks more evenly with less likelihood of burning, and cleanup is much easier. 
You might also consider using thicker pans than the thick cookie sheet that comes with the oven. We have also learned that cast iron bread pans provide superior heat distribution for more even cooking. We really like using a wire cooking rack to place pans on as it provides a more even heat distribution. There is a convenient thermometer on the door that helps you cook at the proper temperature. The thermometer averages about 120 degrees less than the actual temperature inside. So if you want to bake at 350 degrees, the thermometer should read around 230 degrees. Oven temperatures up to 500 degrees can be regulated by controlling the amount of fuel in the rocket stove in and by opening the oven door a small amount. Smaller twigs generate more and faster heat than larger sticks. As the sticks burn, make sure you push them into the rocket stove in in order to maintain a consistent heat. The door latch, the wiring handle, is easy to use, even when the oven is hot. We have found that even when opening the door to peek inside to see how the food is doing or to adjust the temperature, that bread does not fall like it would if you open the door in your home oven while baking bread. A few maintenance and safety tips. After multiple uses, you will need to dump the ashes. When the rocket stove is cold, tip it so the ashes fall out of the burn chamber. The creosote scraper should be used when storing your oven, or about once a month when using it long term. Turn the handle clockwise and leave it in a horizontal position when cooking. Even though you are not seeing much smoke with the rocket stove in, it will get the bottom of your pots and pans black. You can apply a thin layer of soap to your pots and pans prior to use. This enables you to easily wash off the soot. When using the rocket stove in, place the handle in back so the plastic handle does not rest on the burn chamber and mount. The rocket stove in will get hot to touch. The burn chamber pipe is especially hot and should not be touched when in use. When not in use, all of the rocket stove in parts fit right inside so it is easy to store and carry. A sun oven is another option to cook food outdoors, but on partly sunny days and during early morning and late evening, the sun oven is mostly ineffective. It can't generate or maintain sufficient, consistent heat to cook. On cloudy days, a sun oven doesn't work at all. The rocket stove oven can be used anytime and in all types of weather. It is even usable and effective on windy days. Imagine trying to cook for your family with just one burner on your stove and no oven. You now have multiple options while camping. You can cook more food, more efficiently, and in less time. The Deluxe Camping Rocket Stove In takes you to a whole new level of outdoor cooking, making your camping experience more clean and comfortable. Order yours today at deluxecamping.com. Okay, some of the things that I like about it, um, I like Dutch ovens, I got a bunch of them. I got some great big ones and small ones and ones without legs. How does wind and a Dutch oven do? How do they, does it work very well with wind? Problem with wind and a Dutch oven, if you've got your coal sitting out and you don't have any wind protection around them, you've got a wind, all of your heat is blown away from your Dutch oven. With the rocket stove and the nice thing about it, you can aim this right directly into the wind if you want to get a rip roaring fire. It's kind of like if you picture a blast furnace, you know, when you get a fire going, you blow on it, how it bursts into flames. Same concept is, is with this. If you don't want quite so much wind, you just tip it away. If it's blowing this way, you put it the other way, and you can get a lip and go, and you don't have to worry about it. In baking bread, is it hard to regulate the temperature and keep it consistent? That's a very, very good question. Two ways you can do it is, as you burn your wood, you can pull it out to cool it down, or push more in and put more in to get it hotter. The easiest way to regulate it is by cracking the door. So if I'm cooking, and let's say my temperature was up at 500 degrees, which is way too hot to do bread, I want to let um, get the temperature crack the door, let the heat dissipate out until it gets down to the temperature I want. Now, if you remember on there, if you are baking bread at 350, um, about 230 is what you want this gauge to say. Now, here's the problem. He has tested. I don't know how many dozens and dozens and dozens of these to get them accurate. And unfortunately, our technology is such because you can see this little uh, thermostat goes inside and only pokes in that far. 
so it's not really accurate because this is not insulated. It's going to be a little bit cooler here than it's going to be inside. So I have a heat gun that I can, you know, shoot inside it and get the exact temperature. And we've done enough playing around to know that it's about 100 to 120 degrees off what it says on here. So you just want to make sure when you do it, you, you just do it um, 230 degrees, which is really 350 in an oven. So just cracking the door, letting the heat dissipate out. Now the nice thing too, I have put bread where I had the door cracked the whole way and it worked out fine. Now typically in an oven, you have bread in and someone comes halfway through the cycle, boom, opens the oven up, all the heat goes out. What happens to the bread? It falls. With this one, again, I say I've cooked on this with the door cracked and it hasn't affected, the bread hasn't, you know, it didn't fall. So it works out real well. Now there's a little a deal in the back that they showed on there. It's a creosote cleaner. And if you can picture this, this is kind of tube within a tube. So your, your food will not get in contact with um, any smoke or anything else. It's just heat. So you've got this tube and this tube on the outside. So the creosote cleaner has a wire that scrapes this tube and another wire that scrapes the outside perimeter. So for in a long-term use, um, and you get a creosote buildup, you just turn that, take this off, shake the creosote out the bottom hole and <coughs> Now this one comes with two pans. This, this little uh, piece right here, let me just show you, this is the actually the handle for the creosote uh, piece in the back. And it's stored in here to keep the pans from coming out. So uh, it comes with two pans. As I've used this over the years, I like um, the option of using um, cast iron when I'm cooking on top or inside. My wife has her pan marked and of course I, anything that's not marked with hers then I can use these. But you can do two loaves of bread. Now you notice these aren't the same size as normal bread pans at home. They're about a, a two-thirds the size. But I like cooking with this because of the insulation value. <coughs> what I found too is uh, you go pick one of these little wire racks up um, at Desiree Industries or Walmart or wherever. And uh, I like putting bread pans on here and cooking rather than cooking on a cookie, cookie sheet. Now with the cookie sheet, <coughs> these have become my best friends, these little silicone pads. The Bosch store down on down on Center Street in Orem, you can get this, these kind of supplies. This is a perfect size, this fits right in there for cookies. You put your cookies on here and they slide right off. Um, you don't have to miss. You can get them at Costco. Okay. Okay. Thank you. They do have some assorted ones now. We did get some. Uh, I got some at Costco. Said yes. Prices are better there. So uh, this is one of my favorites. A thicker pan um, and it holds the heat better. Now I always get the question asked. Well, how efficient are these? How much fuel do you need to burn to get to cook some things in it? So. We did a little test one. I got uh, five sticks of wood, and I says, let's see how much food we can cook off these five sticks of wood. So we got the fire going, and a lot of you have seen these. It's just basically an egg carton with uh, wood shavings and sawdust in it with paraffin to get the thing going. Um, these will burn five to seven minutes just on their own, so you can get uh, you know wood started very easily. So you just pull out the tray slip it in the back, and uh, then you can start putting your wood in. So what we did, first we, we put a batch of cookies on, got our, our cookies in there, cooked the cookies, and got them out, and then on the top, I didn't use this pan, I had a pan like this that I did um, some sausage, so I put some sausage on top, and cooked it at the same time the cookies were cooking. I took it out, I still had enough heat, I did another batch of cookies, I still had enough heat. I did a batch of sweet rolls. So off five little sticks, I was a kid cook all that. And I cooked for an hour and a half. Now, I've been a scout master in cooking for a long time. This is the wood that I use to get my bigger stuff going, you know, to get coals. And you're going to go through a ton more wood with an open fire than you will with one of these. I think that's the value of this is we're in a situation where, you know, I've got, I've got a lot of propane stored. I've got a lot of briquettes stored. I've got, you know, white gas for stoves, and, and when that butane I've got as well, um, when that goes, 
We've got pine cones you can use, rolled up newspapers, magazines. Uh, this will burn coal. It, has, it can handle the heat of coal. It'll burn briquettes. It'll burn little sticks, twigs from the yard. Um, you prune your trees. This is from an almond tree. I uh, had to cut down. You know, it'll burn any, any kind of things you have in your yard. So they're very economical and they'll burn little, little stuff. Anything that will fit in this hole will burn. So that's about the size you can put in. Now, with the, uh, you say, well, this is just rebar on the top. And the reason we went with that rather than making a specific stand here, many times when you're cooking outside, um, you get round bottom pans because you warp them. Your kids, you know, they take them right from the stove and put them under water to, you know, cool, cool them off. And then all of a sudden you've got a warp pan. So this was designed so that a warp pan, it'll conform to the shape of the pan and it won't rock. So that's why we left it that way. And plus it's an easy way you pick it up and put it right inside for storage. Um, so that's why we went with that. So my recommendation, when people are using this for uh, for cooking uh, just one thing on top, I, if I were just going to cook on the top, I wouldn't put whatever I'm going to cook up here because, again, you lose heat, it dissipates out. This is still cooked, but it's not as efficient as cooking here. Does that make sense? This is all insulated with uh, perlite. For those of you that do, do gardening and know what that is, vermiculite, perlite are the insulators or the insulators, that what they use because they hold moisture in the garden so that when you're potting soil. And perlite is the white granule stuff that uh, is, I call it volcanic popcorn, um, and it can withstand the high temperatures you get inside here. And people ask many times too, well, how does this do, you know, if you put it on a table like this, aren't you going to melt and burn the table? I've had this thing with a heat gun. My heat gun only goes up to 1,000 degrees. So I've tested it inside here to see what, how hot I can get it, and then when it hits 1,000, it says hot. I wish it would go higher, but I, you know, it does go up to 1,000. So this will be 1,000 degrees up here, and I can put my hand underneath here and it doesn't burn. I can put it right on a table like this and cook, and it's not going to melt the table because of the insulation on it. So basically the whole concept behind a rocket stove that are insulated is we're trying to capture as much heat as we can and focus it on what we're trying to cook rather than having an open fire it dissipates all over everywhere. So that's the, the concept behind the wok and so Now with a, you know, a wok, it'll go on here fine. We've tested all different kinds of cooking things. Even a pressure cooker. Uh, when I do a pressure cooker, I will get uh, a heat diffuser like this and put it on top and then put the pressure cooker on and you can even do a pressure cooker on this. So it's a very versatile when it comes to that as well. I had a friend that picked this up. He, he was, I talked to him and he uh, showed me this. And what this is, this is a water container that will fit. This one won't fit as well. I will fit on top of here. So the concept behind this is this will be another tool that I'm, we're trying to get developed so that you can do hot water for doing dishes for cleaning and other things that you put right on top of your rocket stove. You're using the heat efficiency of the rocket stove to heat your hot water up. Got your little nozzle here and pour your water in the hole right here with the funnel. And this thing will hold um, four, I think about four gallons of water. So you can use that for cooking, for washing, you know, spit bath or whatever. Um, so this is a, our new little thing that we're trying to get developed so that we'll have that to put on top of this as well as the oven so that you can have a way to wash with as well. So with that being said, I've, I've uh, gone through a lot of different things. Are there any questions on the rock or silver, anything else we've talked about today that I can help answer? Where do you get the diffuser that you use for the pressure cookers? Oh, great. Um, I got, you can get this from Camp Chef. They're up in Logan. You can get it online from them, or you can get it at Cal Ranch. They sell this. Camp Chef makes this for this particular one. There's several that are out there commercially. You can buy them too, but I got mine from Camp Chef. And then the little uh, um, red pans, Camp Chef, I got those from them as well. I one at IFA. Okay, IFA sells, sells them too. I think, are they the Camp Chef brand or? They carry a lot of good cast iron okay. products. So IFA and Cal Ranch are some good sources here locally you can get that from. 
Um, Rack Outlet sometimes has them as well. They have the Dutch oven you can get, get from them. So with the, uh, with the thermostat on here, the big thing is it just realize it cooks hotter than what it says. I wish they invented one that was accurate, but unfortunately the guy that makes these has been testing, I don't know how many hundreds he, he, he goes through. This is the best one he's come up with so far, um, and, uh, but it's still not 100% you know, accurate. Okay, well with that, if you've got any more questions, feel free to come up. Thank you so much for being here today, and I think we got you done in time to you go to your soccer game. <laughs> oh, question. Can you use it for heating source? Great. Can you use this for heating source? If this can actually go inside a tent, so if I have a tent, um, Cylinder stoves makes a tent, a laknax, there's a lot of them out there that have a, a stove you can put in your tent. So what you can do, obviously a stove in a tent is going to be more, it'll disperse more heat than this will because um, all the sides and surfaces on are exposed to the air. This one is designed more for fuel efficiency, but if you were to put this on top and then run your pipe through the uh, ceiling, this whole thing would radiate out heat. This radiates heat. This will be hot to the touch like your oven at home, but it's not going to burn you. This, you will definitely not want to touch. You'll, get, you'll burn yourself if you touch this. So this can be used for a tent, and you know, if you had a smaller tent, this would this could heat up and this would radiate enough heat in an emergency situation. You could actually, um, Cylinder Stoves has a little kit that you could put something like this or one of their stoves in your house and just where you don't have a flue built into your roof in a, in a situation, you could actually run it through a window and up the side of the eaves and uh, um, have that flexibility. Alrighty, well, great. Thank you for being here. and. Uh, I should have had some bread or something, cookies we could have made here for a demo so you can see how it really how it works. Okay, any other questions at all? Yep. Oh, I was just said, any other questions at all? Oh, okay. So you, you sell these, Kevin? Do you yes. want to, I mean, uh, so there's, on there's the state website? Since, you know, we don't do anything at church there, so you go on the website, and if you want one, uh, you know, if there's any of this stuff you want, you know, when I 10% discount on that, just write in the notes section on when you go online and just say, hey, I was at Kevin's presentation, he told me that I'd get 10% off. So this is the same thing when we do shows, you know, like Prepper Con or Firm Foundation, I think it's the same percentage they get off on that. Oh, one other thing too, we have, there's a camp that we do this, we're doing this summer, that uh, if you are interested in using and learning how to use any of these things here, um, it'll be uh, um, August 14th through the 19th, Morgan, Utah area, just below East, uh, East Canyon Reservoir, and we have, we're going to have about 450 people there, and uh, we'll be up there, and, and people, we ask them to bring your sun ovens, bring your gear, bring your stuff you want to learn how to do that you've had in your garage, you've got it, but you've never opened the box, bring it up. We have classes, three classes a day. There's a potluck dinner. We have uh, primary things for kids. We've got things for repelling and things for the older kids and classes for the adults. And then the evenings we have firesides. Um, guest speakers come and, and talk. And a lot of us on, you know, uh, temporal prep is important, but to me the most important part is the spiritual preparation that we need all need to have for what's coming ahead. And we have a lot's going to be, our focus is going to be on spiritual preparation. But the temple is important too. So that's, that's going to be available for those of you that might be interested. You go to zionsfamilycamp.com and you can register. So zionsfamilycamp.com. And you can register now, is that correct? You can correct? register now. It's open. Okay. Yep. And it'll fill up quick. I, I'll, you know, every year we have to pay turn. Hundreds of people away, and it fills up really quick. Okay. 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 Thank you. You bet.